Hello, my name is Heather Zemp, and this is the story of Rhodopsis. As first told to Strabo, the Greek philosopher, and recorded in 24 AD. Long ago, in the land of Egypt, the land of the Green Nile and the bright blue Mediterranean Sea, there lived a young girl whose name was Rhodopsis. She was a slave who had been kidnapped by pirates and sold into slavery. She had been bought by a kind master who was very old and not always aware of what was happening in his household. He was a kind man, but he did not see how the other servants treated Rhodopsis. The other girls had long black hair that was straight with dark eyes and skin the color of copper sand. And when they saw Rhodopsis with her wavy hair and bright green eyes and pink skin that burned in the sun, they despised her. They would give her all sorts of difficult jobs, and they would tease her mercilessly. They would say, Rhodopsis, see how the geese are in the garden. Rhodopsis, mend my robe. Rhodopsis, you must bake the bread. And on and on, they teased and tormented her. Rhodopsis had no friends that were people, but she had made friends with animals. And every day she would go down to the Nile River and see her friends. She had trained a little bird to eat seeds from her hand and a little monkey would sit on her shoulder. And when she neared the water, the hippopotamus would rise up out of the water and shoot water at its nose and wiggle its ears in greeting. If Rhodopsis had energy at the end of the day, she would go down to the river and sing and dance with her animal friends. And one day she was having a particularly good day. It had not been so hot and she was able to finish her work early. And as she was singing and dancing and enjoying herself with her friends, what she didn't realize was that her master was there next to the river asleep under a tree. And when he awoke to her singing and dancing and he saw her in the sunlight, he thought, that is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. What a shame this, this servant of mine has no shoes. And so he commissioned shoes to be made for Odopsis from some of his artisans. They had leather soles with rose gold embroidered tops and they were so beautiful and so unique, and Rhodopsis loved her sandals. But the other servant girls became even more cross and more jealous of Rhodopsis' beauty, and they would boss her mercilessly. Well, about this time, an announcement was made by the Pharaoh that he was going to be holding court and that everyone was invited to come and sing and dance. Of course, Rhodopsis wanted to go. She loved to sing and dance. And as they were preparing to go, and Rhodopsis was preparing to go, the other servant girls just laughed and said, Rhodopsis, you cannot come. And they gave her a very long list of jobs that would be impossible for her to finish in time to go. And as Rhodopsis stood on the banks of the river and watched the barge sail away with the other girls, they waved back with their noses high in the air. And she went to work. She had her laundry with her. And she, as she washed the laundry, she sang a little song. Weed the garden, wash the linen, grind the grain. Weed the garden, wash the linen, grind the grain. And as she worked, she was very disappointed and maybe splashed more than she ought, for her sandals became wet. And so she took them and set them on the bank behind her to dry in the sun and went back to her work. And as she was working overhead, a large shadow came over and blocked the sun from her view and swooped down. And there was a falcon, a beautiful, majestic falcon, and it snatched one of her slippers and flew away. Well, when Rhodopsis saw this, she was curious. What could this mean? She recognized immediately that it was a sign from the god Horus. And she was curious as to what it could mean. Well, back in Memphis, where court was being held, the pharaoh was sitting. He was bored by the activities. He did not like going to court. He would much prefer to be riding in his chariot across the sands or going on some marvelous adventure. And as he sat there and watched and was bored, overhead light was blocked by a shadow above his head and that falcon swooped down and dropped the slipper right in his lap. Well, when he looked up and saw the falcon, he immediately knew it was a sign from the god Horus. And he thought, what could this be? And as he stared at this unique and beautiful slipper, 
he knew whoever this slipper fit should be his bride and become the queen. And so he sent a decree to all the land that whosoever should fit the slipper should become his queen. Well, he went from city to city, trying the shoe on as many maidens as he could find. But to no avail, he could not find anyone that fit this beautiful small slipper. And so he set off on his barge to go to each of the villages along the Nile River. And soon he came to Rhodopsis' village. And as the trumpets blared and the purple silk sails flowed in the breeze, Rhodopsis was frightened and hid in the reeds to see what would happen. And as she was hiding in the reeds, the other servant girls ran to the landing, eager to try the slipper on. When they saw the slipper, they knew whose it was, but they did not tell Rhodopsis because they despised her so. And as they were trying and failing to put the slipper on, the pharaoh peered into the reeds. Behind the grass, he saw two beautiful green eyes peeking out. You there, what is your name, he said. And as Rhodopsis came forward, he insisted that she try on the slipper. It was a perfect fit. And after she put the slipper on, she pulled from her tunic its pair and put it on also. And then and there, the Pharaoh decreed, this woman shall be my queen. The servant girls cried out, oh no, she's not fit to be the queen of Egypt. She's not even from Egypt. And he said, oh, you are mistaken. She has been chosen by the god Horus and she is the most Egyptian of all for her eyes are the color of green of the Nile and her golden hair is the color of the grain that grows along the Delta banks. And her skin is as pink as a lotus flower and she will be my queen. And so it was, Rhodopsis became the queen of Egypt. And if things have not changed, they are the same today.